Hey there guys, it's uh, Philly here from Fidelity Factory. Find me at PowerPhil1 on Twitter. And I'm just doing a video today to show you how you can use the run after um, feature on actions in Power Automate to kind of help do a bit of error checking, help kind of keep some auditing on what's going wrong if your apps fail or if your flows fail. So right now I've got this flow here that I just set up. It's just got a manual trigger. And all it does is it grabs an item from a SharePoint list. And sometimes might have one of these flows set up and might run fine. It might be being prompted from Power Apps or wherever. Sometimes it might fail. And without putting in anything extra here, on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll just be left not really knowing that it failed or why it failed. So it can be quite... Uh, annoying that way. So let's say if I just run this flow right now. Okay, it says it ran successfully. It says my flow failed. But let's say that was just kicking off on a schedule every day. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know unless I look in at this that my flow failed. And one of the problems is if I let's say just try and add an email step, let's say just to mail myself something. So if I add in. Purine at I'm going to just throw in an email to myself. Um, and I'm just going to put in some content here. This flow failed, that's all I'm going to say in my body. But if I actually just run that as is, well, it's it's going to not really work because let's just test it out again. Because once one item fails, well, the following one isn't going to get sent off. So if you look at this, uh, my, I didn't get my item from SharePoint, so the rest of my flow failed. So how we can use the run after feature is like this. I can, after this one fails, I can set my configure run after on my email so that this, maybe we don't run this if it if the previous action is successful. We'll only run it if it's, let's say, failed, skipped, or is timed out. So this time, uh, let's save this. So this time, I'm actually going to run my test. And it will fail on the get item but then recognize that it needs to send out an email to let me know it failed on that get item which is pretty cool so now if it fails here i get an email to let me know hey your flow failed which is really handy now if it actually is successful on this we don't want that to happen so what i would do then is whatever i actually want my next step to be let's say it's um send a different email so this was successful or something or sorry I'm writing that into the wrong place but if I wanted to send a different email to myself let me just grab some more information and success and I'll just put a yes for the body so that I, yes, this was successful. And what I can do here is, if you can picture here, what we're doing is when this kicks off, if my get item works, we're going to skip this. This this thing here, this fail, and let's let's name it uh, fail notification. This only runs if my get item fails. So it's skipped if there's a success. So this is my success notification. So how I can kind of continue on if everything's successful is, well, my success will only run after. I'm going to configure the run after again. If my fail notification has failed, skipped, or timed out. If my fail notification actually runs, then I don't want to go here. But otherwise, I want it to get to my success. So this way we're kind of bring, bringing it 
so that there's different possible outcomes, almost like in the, the condition, but just in kind of steps. So once again, that's really all there is to it, is with the configure after, if I want to run an action like here, get items, well, I want to have something in there so that if that fails, it'll send out an email. And that's where I do this configure run after again, where if it has failed, skipped or timed out, it'll send out that failure notification. Now, that failure notification won't run on a success, so then I can send out my success notification or continue on the rest of my flow if the failure item has failed, skipped or timed out. So that way we put in some error checking, which is really useful and helps us kind of keep, uh, keep on top of whether our flow is failing or succeeding and whether our actions are actually going through. So if you found this video helpful, follow me at PowerPhil1 on Twitter and I'll see you guys next time.